welcome. I'm Priya Atul Siddiqui. On Biggest Exclusive tonight, we talk about the decade-old gruesome rape and murder case that had sent shock waves across the country. Predators moving on the streets looking for prey should be hanged till death. That was what the Delhi High Court had observed while upholding the 2014 trial court ruling of awarding capital punishment to the accused in the 2012 rape and murder of a 19-year-old in Delhi's Chawla area. The accused had then appealed to the Supreme Court of India in 2015. The case that was in limbo for the better part of a decade on Monday saw the accused walking scot-free. Yes. The Supreme Court of India pronounced its judgment in the case and in what came as a shock to parents and the well-wishers of the victim the apex court acquitted all three accused. Remember this was a gruesome rape and murder where the victim was beaten with car tools her body parts had cigarette burns and acid poured on her. Her mutilated body was found 3 days after her abduction. So despite the police claims of having solved the case with confessions from the accused and findings of investigation reinforced by DNA evidence and the trial court and the high court both having accepted it to award the death sentence why this acquittal by the supreme court this even as the apex court agreed that if the accused involved in heinous crimes go unpunished or are acquitted agony and frustration is caused to society and to the family members of the victim reason the prosecution failed to prove the charges beyond reasonable doubt and that there were glaring lapses in the investigation the supreme court further gave its informed reasoning saying that courts should strictly decide cases on merits in accordance with law and should not be influenced by any kind of outside moral pressures but what happens to the victim's family who clearly is devastated and shocked because of this verdict what about the justice that is due to them So let's now first look at why the Supreme Court, the apex court of the country, let these men off. This is what we have uh, found out through the observations that have been made by the court. Now the court went on to say that uh, it, unable to prove the evidence, identification, and medical reports, all of this really claim about the glaring lapses. Also, prosecution failed to point out the guilt of the accused. Very, very important point again mentioned by the court: lack of clear, cogent evidence and DNA profiling. Again, something very important mentioned by the court over there. Also, glaring lapses during trial of the matter. Time and again, this is what the apex court of the country had claimed. Ten out of the forty-nine witnesses were not cross-examined by the defence. Very, very important point that the court made. So clearly, here they're talking about the police investigation that was, so to speak, held by the trial court and later by the high court, uh, the Delhi High Court. But something that really claimed shoddy investigation that really was brought out by the apex court of the country. Now, the judgment by the Supreme Court. goes on to find fault with the police investigation however the critique it offers on the judicial process and not being free from defects cannot be missed either the trial court and the high court after all did accept the findings of a bad investigation the holes in the investigation pointed out by the supreme court judgment should have ideally been caught by the trial court itself but let's look at what the trial court verdict really said So the kidnap vehicle was in custody of the accused that's point number 1 that was brought to light victim's hair strand was found on the car seat point number 2 the other thing that was brought to light was dna from the semen spots was similar to that of the accused who were in custody at the time body was recovered on disclosures by the accused remember the accused number 1 was the one who led to where the body can be found accused wallet was found near the victim's body that was a very important piece of evidence victim's blood spots were found on the vehicle tools another important piece of evidence that was brought in the court by the investigation authorities autopsy opined that victim was hit by a jack and spanner car tools were used to hit the victim car's broken bumper piece was found near the victim's body that's how gruesome this entire tale of abduction and murder was 
Victim's clothes were found at the accused's rented flat. So remember, after the rape, she was abducted and taken out of Delhi. Mixed male DNA profile found in the swab test. Hence, there were evidences of a gang rape. Mixed male DNA profile, like I mentioned, uh, was something that was an important point of the investigation that the court chose to stand by and hence awarding that uh, death penalty. Now, we can go ahead and break all this down and look at the legal loopholes. But what does this mean for the family members of the victim, whose only hope was to seek justice for their daughter? I'm joined on the broadcast by Kiran's parents. Thank you very much for joining us. I know that it's a very difficult time for you, but what have you done to keep the fight in this fight? Will you file a review petition? Thank you very much for your question. Yes, I will file it. और इसको ओपन करके जो है इसको दोबारा से इसमें जो है कि कार्रवाई होगी ये मेरे साथ में जो हुआ है वो तो मैं भूल जाऊंगा लेकिन आगे जो आने वाला जो समय है और जो डिसीजन हमारे सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जज ने दिया है वो एक बहुत भयंकर डिसीजन दिया है कि मतलब जिन मुलजिमों को फांसी का लोअर कोर्ट से है और हाई कोर्ट से डिक्लेयर हो चुका है और सुप्रीम कोर्ट में जहाँ पर न्याय होता है वहाँ पर सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जज ने उनको बरी कर दिया है मेरे को अफसोस हो रहा है कि आगे आने वाले समय को कैसा काटेंगे हिंदुस्तान की बेटी माँ बहन जो भी हैं वो कोई कॉलेज जा रहे हैं कोई स्कूल जा रहे हैं कोई अपनी जॉब करने जा रहे हैं टाइम बे टाइम आना जाना जिस तरह से वो तीन मुलजिम थे कल आज तीन हैं वो कल तीन सौ हो जाएंगे छः सौ हो जाएंगे क्योंकि उनको पता है कि हमें सुप्रीम कोर्ट से बाईजित बरी मिल गया है जबकि हमको फांसी होनी थी जी मैम आप एक माँ हैं बहुत लोग जुड़े हैं आपके साथ इस लड़ाई में यहाँ बात आज देश की हर बेटी की हो रही है उसकी सुरक्षा की की जा रही है आप उन सभी को जो आपके गम में शामिल है उनसे क्या कहना चाहेंगे अब तो तो कोर्ट ही जाने की क्या चूक हो रखी है चूक होती तो मतलब लोअर कोर्ट में हाई कोर्ट में कैसे डिसीजन आ गया कि फांसी दो इनको <coughs> वहाँ भी तो कुछ चूक हो सकती थी चलो लोग लोअर कोर्ट से फांसी दे दी हाई कोर्ट में चूक हो सकती थी तो वहाँ से भी कुछ मतलब फांसी का ही ऑर्डर था लोअर कोर्ट से फांसी का ऑर्डर था और सुप्रीम कोर्ट में आके आई है एकदम से इन्होंने मतलब तब तक पलट दिया सरकार से भी कुछ अपील करना चाहेंगे आज आप सरकार से अपील हमारी यही की है कि मतलब इन दरिंदों को फांसी दिया जाए और ये अन्याय है और आगे आने वाली पीढ़ी के साथ में ऐसा ना हो और जिस तरह के सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जज ने मतलब जो है कि इन दरिंदों को बरी कर दिया है तो बरी करने के बाद इनके हौसले बुलंद ये लोअर कोर्ट में हमको धमकी देते थे जब ये त्यौहार से पेशी पे बुलाए जाते लाए जाते बिल्कुल वहाँ पे है जैसे है, अब हम पेरेंट्स हैं आप हमारे साथ में सपोर्टर में आए तो उधर से आए तो हम आपको बाहर निकलने के बाद काटेंगे ये ये क्या सीन है सात साल वो फाइल सुप्रीम कोर्ट में थी डिसीजन आने हाई कोर्ट का डिसीजन आने के बाद सात साल में उस फाइल पर एलिगेशन नहीं लगा और एक दिन में उसमें एलिगेशन पैदा हो गया और ऑर्डर फाइनल करने के बाद मुलजिम को बोल दिया तुम अपने रास्ता नापो और मैं अपना रास्ता नाप रहा हूँ तो आप ये कह रहे हैं कि चूक जहाँ पे भी हुई है आपको ऐसा लगता है कि पब्लिक प्रोसिक्यूटर के सही तरीके से केस ना प्रेजेंट करने की वजह से ये हुआ है क्या आप ये कह रहे हमारी सरकारी वकील को क्या वैल्यू रखेगा हाँ होता मेरा अपना वकील पर्सनल तो वो धर धोस के वहाँ पे वो करता बहस करता गिरे करता लेकिन एक तो लेडीज ऊपर से सरकारी जो सरकार ने दिया था वो हमें उसी पे चल रहे थे और लोअर कोर्ट से हमें सरकारी वकील मिला हुआ था लोअर कोर्ट से हाई कोर्ट से सुप्रीम कोर्ट तक सुप्रीम कोर्ट में मुलजिम को सरकारी वकील दिए जा रहे हैं क्यों 
एक तो उन्होंने क्रेम कर रखा है ऊपर से उनको सरकारी वकील दिया जा रहा है मैंने जजू से पूछा भी था अपने साइड के जो जज अपने इनको सरकारी वकील क्यों बोला जी इन्होंने अपील डाली है कि हमारे पास पैसा नहीं है हमें वकील सरकारी दिया जाए और उसी का बेनिफिट उठा गया जज जी हम समझ सकते हैं बहुत ही शॉकिंग वर्डिक रहा है आपके लिए आज जो, जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट से ऑब्वियसली सामने आया है रिव्यू पिटिशन जो आप डालने की सोच रहे हैं कुछ अपील करना चाहेंगे हमारे चैनल के जरिए कोर्ट से मैं यही कहना चाहूंगी कि एक बार हम अपील करेंगे तो कृपया उस पर थोड़ा ध्यान धरे ताकि ऐसे मतलब ऐसे दरे से छूटे नहीं क्योंकि कहीं पर भूल चूक हो जाती है गलती हो जाती है तो उस पर थोड़ा गौर करके ताकि हमें भी इंसाफ मिले अब दस ग्यारह साल हो गए तो एक माह के लिए ग्यारह साल के ग्यारह दिन भी बहुत होते हैं तो इसी कारण ही है कि हम बहुत दुखी हैं उस दिन से तो अब पहले तो यह था कि चलो हमें ये सोचा कि चलो फांसी नहीं तो उम्र कैद होगी तो जज साहब ने तो बिल्कुल ऐसे कर दिया कि बिल्कुल उनको बरी कर दिया जैसे उन्होंने कुछ कांड नहीं किया हो अब चलो उन्होंने नहीं किया मान किसने किया है फिर ये तो और मुजरिम को ले आओ वहाँ पे कि इन्होंने कर रखा तो हम मानेंगे कि चलो इन्होंने किया तो इनको छोड़ो पर ये नहीं जब सब चीज़ उनकी निशान दे पे और लड़की वहाँ से मिली हुई रास्ते खुद पुलिस को उन्होंने रास्ता बताया कि हम वहाँ 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 से उधर रास्ते से वहाँ गए हैं जी बहुत शुक्रिया हमारे साथ जुड़ने के लिए द फैमिली मेम्बर्स क्लियरली वेरी वेरी गटेड एज यू कैन सी फ्रॉम दी अपील दैट दे आर मेकिंग Uh, through this verdict that's come out of the supreme court they are of course going to be filing a review petition however what happens to their faith in the judiciary is also the big question let me open the debate now on the show we are asking the chavla murder rape case is this a clear case of justice having been denied to kiran that's the big question let me take this across to my other guests who are now joining us on the broadcast swapnil kotari as an advocate joins us also joining us is women rights activist yogita bayana and charu khanna who's the former member of the ncw thank you so much for being a part of this discussion i will start with you first swapnil do you think from what has happened in the course of everything that's come out of the supreme court is this a case of apex court trying to school uh, the lower courts in this case the delhi high court and the trial court and in doing so justice has been denied to kiran um uh, griha uh, the schooling of the lower courts is a secondary aspect uh, the supreme court can always do that on its own not through a case but even otherwise uh, through phone calls or uh, through uh, you know seminars or through several discussions that they seem to have with the lower courts off and on uh, so it's it's called the advisory jurisdiction of mm. the supreme court in many ways or the supervisory jurisdiction to be so precise uh, the advisory is to advise the president but the supervisory is to supervise the lower courts now uh, as far as uh, the denial of the justice is concerned obviously uh, i believe that uh, being a victim's family if i was there i would definitely be perturbed and shocked by this event especially by this judgment especially when the two courts the lower the trial court and the high court have confirmed the death penalty so here the acquittal itself itself is a big uh, a blow a body blow to the victims uh, family yeah but having said that if one looks within the parameters of the three acts which govern the criminal jurisprudence which is the code of civil procedure the evidence act and the indian penal code uh, more so here the evidence uh, if you look at the reasoning that has been given by the supreme court uh, it has been very direct they are saying that none of the witnesses could directly identify the accused one mm. the constables who arrested the accused were never examined mm. now that itself the first and the second one itself is enough mm. for me to acquit the accused because if the constables who arrested they themselves have not been examined that means they have not been uh, given a chance to be cross examined mm. by the defense so if they don't examine now if there are public prosecutor on one side which is on behalf of the state uh, and on the other side there is a public uh, uh, there is a defendant a uh, lawyer who has been appointed by the court because they did not have the means to appoint a lawyer the accu- uh, the guilty or the accused should i say that means there could have been a possible arrangement between the two mm. that uh, uh, you know some sort of a compromise arrived at that you do not present the case properly as you rightly pointed out reha in that question when you asked the parents uh, uh, you know that don't you think do you think that the public prosecutor didn't do a sufficient job these things happen day in day out i'm not saying that it has happened in this case because i was not there to you know to witness how the hmm. whole thing went on hmm. but imagine the chief justice of india bela trivedi who is a woman herself yeah and ravindra bhat so these are three judges who have taken 
a viewpoint after examining the case through and through they have come to a conclusion that there is not enough evidence to point guilt towards the accused and that the lower courts should not be swayed by media attention or anything or external issues and just go by the evidence and looking at the screen on the screen that the points that you proved hmm. or rather that you showed to me hmm. that on the basis of which the lower courts gave the advice and which was gave the judgment on which the delhi high court confirmed it it seems to me that the lower courts have gone by circumstantial evidence which is absolutely fine hmm. there's no problem hmm. about that hmm. but now when the supreme court comes out with this it's a tad too difficult for the lower courts or for any lawyer to say that all these things which are glaring evidence lapses you call it lapses of investigation yes. you call lapses of trial even 2g scam i mean what happened you've seen that absolutely uh, you know, they are not conclusive and that exactly is the big argument uh, that exactly. of course now was my, put my, for my uh, so my, i'll just uh, i'll just uh, come uh, back to you i'll just come back to you charu you've been with the family members and the fact that you've seen this entire trial proceed from the trial court to the delhi high court and now the apex court of the country what the parents were claiming do you see that it was it really true because do you see that there was actually uh, that kind of a communication that should have happened when it comes to the public prosecutor was not there and because of which these lapses that sopnil also is talking about were very very glaring which is what was presented in the apex court as well charu i think you're on mute if you can unmute yourself charu we are not able to hear you All right there's some audio issue with Charu's link we'll get that fixed Yogita let me come to you I'll ask you the same question from the observations that have been made in the lower courts to what has happened in the apex court on Monday how do you see things panned out and spiral out what was going in the favor of the family members clearly not so much anymore when it when the matter came to the supreme court of the country see uh lower and high court i am not sure i mean we were very hopeful that of course i was watching it from outside but i was not part of the trial and this mm-hmm. is that but in supreme court each and every hearing have been there with charu and uh, i mean we were really shocked with this judgment we were really okay least we were expecting it will turn to uh, life imprisonment because there were no arguments as such on investigation Charu mm-hmm. will tell you better legally, mm-hmm. but there was no as such, you know, there was no uh, doubt about the investigation much as it has come out. So, do you think it was taken period. for granted, and because of which probably those arguments were not well presented? And don't you no. think? And do you think also to add to this question, the apex court could probably have uh, uh, could have reduced the sentence rather than acquittal? Absolutely, he, they would have. least they could have gone for reinvestigation or or as as they could have called the right people for you know the whatever the lapses were they could have asked for reopening of hmm. these lapses or they have hardly given time to this case trust me on that hmm. i've been to each and every hearing of nirbhaya in supreme court i've been to each and every hearing of this particular case i have seen huge difference there was a very very uh, ample hearing given to nirbhaya case in this case hardly 10% of that time has been given even their lapses on investigation were discussed like co- called uh, records were not matching the okay. location and all those things were discussed as such but here it discussed maybe in two three hearings so i think it is very unfair you know for them to just okay. let them free or right. set them free so charu I, i hope you can hear me now are you able to hear me charu Yes, uh, sorry. Okay. Actually, my uh, voice was on mute that yeah. time. Yeah. I'll answer your question. I think that the public prosecutor at the sessions must have presented the case well enough that the judge was convinced that there was enough evidence on record to prove a case beyond reasonable doubt mm. against these three, and that's why a punishment. of capital punishment uh, was given death pun- uh, was given hmm. and when the matter goes to the high court because the death reference has to be done by the high court you know hmm. somehow we have a system where it's not enough if the sessions gives it so the high court has upheld it hmm. so two courts have gone through the you know evidence thoroughly and let me tell you in the sessions when the trial is done the the judge also sees the demeanor of the witnesses how they are behaving are they truthful are they talking everything it's not that just some blandly typing of the whatever the testimony they are saying hmm. 
Otherwise, they could have given a, you know, a evidence on affidavit. But they'd see the demeanor. And now when the matter comes, this is a fast track court. Remember, I want you to highlight this case. Mm. This is a fast track court case, 2000 to 2014 sessions and high court gave the decision. Matter comes to Supreme Court. Mm. Fast track court case comes to Supreme Court and it takes seven years. Yes. And then on 7th April, the matter was reserved for uh, judgment six and a half, seven months. Mm. On Friday, I mentioned the matter. Hmm. Friday, I had to mention the matter to the Chief Justice that it's going to be his last day. So this judgment is still not pronounced. So the, on Monday, they come hmm. out with this absolutely shocking judgment. Hmm. And as far as the prosecution, what you're saying, you see, I understand the parents' anguish, even I'm equally shocked. But the yeah. prosecution has presented the case. All right, well, some... that's Okay. That's why this. All right. Some problem with Charu's link again. So, Abdul, coming back to you, you know, when it comes to capital punishment cases, there is data to suggest that out of, let's say, about 49 or 42 of those, just one is upheld. That is the number of fallouts that we are talking about. And also, how the lower courts are sort of trigger happy to give and be more than ready to give capital punishments. Don't you think it is not fair? It's absolutely unfair on the part of the family members of the victim who are actually looking up to the judiciary for this kind of a justice? Uh, well, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, you know, I completely sympathize with the victim's uh, family. And uh, uh, it is true that uh, the trial court and the high courts are trigger happy because they believe that death penalty is there. So it's a rarest of rare case. Uh, it was brutal rape, and that's how we should award it. Hmm. Now, the Supreme Court has a different viewpoint on it. It uh, First of all, I don't think it saw the crime the way the... Uh, it rather didn't see a crime at all. Or rather, even if it saw, it did not see enough evidence supporting the crime. Hmm. Now, my advice will be on two, uh, two aspects. The first is, I think, to say that it took seven years for the Supreme Court. The answer is hmm. no. From what I understand is that the appeal was filed to the Supreme Court in 2019. So uh, then, obviously, six to seven months for a judgment to come. That's rather strange. Now, that is something which definitely brooks my attention. And I would definitely go into a review petition as far as this aspect is concerned. I would not disappoint the family members. I strongly suggest that they should go for a review petition. That is one. Hmm. Two, that they should go with all the findings of the lower courts and try to point out that those findings also merit a consideration. Even if there are these two glaring lapses, which I just pointed out in my first comment to you, hmm. I think there is enough sub substantial circumstantial evidence to point fingers towards the accused and that they need to go uh, all of these uh, you know threats that you gave that we'll cut you out and the moment you come out of the court all of these doesn't apply what applies is what matters is as uh, you know one of my panelists pointed out the behavior before the court and they could be absolutely straightforward nice innocent guys the way they are behaving ultimately it's the evidence that has been presented hmm. Rhea, let me tell you one thing when it comes to the supreme court or for that matter any court for that matter at the highest level generally an investigation is not looked into unless, of course, here the defense would have tried extremely hard hmm. to reopen every aspect of the investigation done by the public prosecutor and the police hmm. and pointed out major holes to say that the investigation was never argued itself is a fallacy because unless you argue on the lapses of the investigation, how do you get the, uh, you know, the judgment completely reversed? Hmm. So the investigation must have been literally punctured through and through by the defense counsel. And the court must have stood convinced that, yes, there are enough punctures to say that the case is not... But was it good enough to acquit doubt. them? Was it good enough to acquit them still? Yes. Yes, I completely... That is where that is where I would want to go into a review petition and literally hammer it down saying that it seems that the court has not given enough attention to this case the way it needed to be given. Because two, three hearings, if that is the case, and I think it's a tad too short. Okay. Even if even if those are full day hearings, I mm. think it's a tad too short. But for also, this kind also, of a case. Charu, do you think do you have any hope with the review for the petition? Because again, data suggests ninety five percent of the of those filed before the apex court are dismissed. No, no, I have absolute full faith. Let me tell you, I am very confident, hopeful, and I believe that the review petition will definitely be admitted mm. because we are. That's why we are taking our time. Otherwise, we could have mm. rushed. To, uh, two days after the judgment, we had one day holiday, good for mm. and the next day we could have mm. gone for a review, but we didn't want to do anything in a hurry. As my uh, friend on the panel said, mm. that we are 
going through all the evidences to show how this judgment is flawed hmm. and again and again everyone is being misled by this first statement that the test identification parade was not held let me tell you witness that girl has said it was dark i did not see anything properly i just saw the red indica come and they grabbed that girl and abducted her what is is it not futile to hold a uh, tip and put four people in front of you and say ina mina maina more guess one guess one i mean so that's what i'm trying to say so yogita you have dealt with so many of such cases what has happened yeah. in kiran's case do you see that there are strong loopholes in the criminal justice system of the country that also needs to be looked at and then what happens to the justice call for kiran i don't know in this particular case i can say that it is justice delayed and justice denied both mm. unfortunately we have to work a lot on reforms charu was with me a while ago and we were discussing overall it's not the only case now this has come out to the limelight we know you know how it, it has been treated mm. and the other person also was saying the enough time which was supposed to be given by the supreme court to, to such kind of a case which mm. really needs a lot of attention was not given so any which way everybody has failed this victim's family and this girl everyone even if you are saying investigation is bossed up you you do something about it you need to put some agency on it if you were not happy you cannot just make one statement in 10 seconds as charu would, was there in that particular court room and by that women just that they are set free i mean you need to understand the sentiments of the victim family also i mean the judgment came much later what kind of a example are you setting in they are out since yesterday two of them do you think they'll not be mingling with with the with the absolutely the that's a, that's a larger question that also needs to be answered however that's all the time that i had i'd like to thank all my guests but not without this important question that uh, has been queued by yogita of course what happens to the safety of the family members of the victim in this case because here in this case the accused the three accused who have been let off by the apex court of the country also were history sheeters and they have known to actually threaten the family members of the victim what happens to their safety is also the larger question that needs to be looked at and wasn't it fair had the sentence not been reduced rather than acquitting the accused altogether is again the big question we we'll leave it at that we are shifting our focus to some breaking news that we are now getting on the broadcast as india's foreign minister s jay shankar has addressed the hindustan times leadership summit today and while speaking about democracy the foreign minister made a subtle remark on the west and the media he said and i quote him here when democracy gives results that do not suit an elite in some part of the world we start attaching exec- adjectives and caveats to it we we speak today about democracy uh, but i point out to you you know uh, when democracy gives results which sometimes does not suit an elite in some part of the world you know immediately you start attaching uh, adjectives and uh, caveats now this is completely ideological an important statement that has been made by an foreign minister s jay shankar remember he was addressing the hindustan times leadership summit and this was when he was speaking about democracy and the larger perspective of democracy now he went on to make this remark when it comes to democracy in the western world and also the media he went on to say that when democracy gives results that do not suit an elite some part in some part of the world then is when there are adjectives and caveats that start to be associated with it an important remark that has been made and this is of course a subtle cue and a stinging criticism at what can be termed as democracy in the west and how media also is responsible for twisting what are the facts this is a statement that has been made by the foreign minister s j shankar we will see what is the kind of reactions that uh, actually uh is is brought about by these statements that have been mentioned by Mr Jay, Jay Shankar talking about uh, the western elitism and how media is also partisan to the views and shaping those views and also twisting them if at all it's not suiting the western elite this is what the foreign minister had gone on to 
say. We'll leave it at that. And with that, I am slipping into a very short break. My colleague Poonam is joining you on the other side with Plain Speak.